You hear that? Must be the train starting. Hello from the Pacific Northwest. The locomotive and the entire Living Loud Andy fan base says, All aboard! Let's go! Thank you, all Fuego, for kicking us off tonight. Feeling a little under the weather, just headache. But it's Friday. I missed you guys. And it's an Ask Me Anything. So without further ado, I'll see you guys in three minutes. you just look at that it's living loud with andy late friday night look at it you see that right there right there you just gotta look at it living loud with andy from the kicker cave for the win thank you william thank you everybody tuning in let's do this thing I took care of that caboose, dummy. Dummy, 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 dummy. There he is. What's up, John? Appreciate you helping me out as always, you Cookie Monster and J5. Uh, man, you know, tonight I didn't really have a topic. Usually Fridays, it's just kind of laid back anyway. It's I, I don't feel sick. Bryson's sick. He's got 103 degree fever. Kayla's not feeling good. I got this just pounding headache right here, so... We're going to see if we can make it the whole hour. <laughs> no guarantees. I was like, I can't cancel. I can't. Because I can talk. As long as I can talk. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. Jason Grant likes the TW2s. They sound pretty nice. Big thanks to Andy and Kicker for the giveaway. See that yelling? Oh, right there. I feel it. Ah. Thank you for all that you do, base heads. Thank you, Jason, and yes, thank you, Kicker, man. I got the TW1s, but the TW2s, I could just imagine how good they sound. Thank you for tuning in, man. Appreciate you. Brian Townsend became a YouTube member. 
Boy, I thought he was already part of the green team down here. I gotta update my list too, but most of the OGs, you guys are already on there on the top scroll. And with the Patreons, appreciate you guys. Ah, oh, man, you know, I knew these questions were gonna come up. I picked up the Batman phone, the big phone, you know, it's black and yellow. Love you, Rob. And uh, I got a few questions answered, but more uh, questions after that answer. You know, so now it's like, I, I, I don't know. I know with the CE Outlook post, that was, you know, I, 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 I'm just going to pull it up because a few people were talking about it. I seen it. I took a look at it. And, and I literally said, would you look at that? The war horse in there. So let me pull it up. I got the CE Outlook website here. I just got to go through their listings. Uh, it's a little bit different on mobile, huh? Yeah, it's a little bit different. Press releases. It's probably going to be under press release. Yes. Kicker, Skills USA, April 10. Today is... Okay, it's probably going to be under car audio then. Let's pull up the car audio. William B William Berg. Will, will, will. Here it is. On CE Outlook, they have it right here and you know me being a kicker guy let's talk about it <laughs> it's it's public knowledge so uh it is what it is so let's see if we can zoom in on this so you guys can look at it a little bit better here let's see whose comment that's from on kicker club that must be on the other kicker audio fan club appreciate you. but when is it going to be released in the price tag in here they do have a listing of the price and it's right here, $1,099. And if you didn't know, that was pretty much the price of the KXA 2400. So you're getting more power and just, I would say more features in a way because it tells you a lot more compared to what the KXA 2400 would tell you. The 2400 was great with the wireless base knob, but you'll see with the Warhorse, it's got a lot more features built inside and uh, I mean, who doesn't like competition mode? So when is it going to be released? You know, it's not going to say here, even though they they, they, they kind of do list it. Here, I'll just read this off for you guys in case you're you're looking in the back and you, you, you want to look at it, but you can't you can't read it too well. Uh, it says here, the two new Warhorse amps are designed for SPL competition. With a super efficient design, they are the first revision of the original 10,000 watt Warhorse competition amplifier that was discontinued around 2008. And that's that's the big boy we got sitting over there, man. I love that thing. A new 3,600 watt mono amplifier, the WX3600.1, is due in June. It should be accompanied with accessories including magnetic mount, diagnostic display to show real-time status for voltage, temperature, and more. It will be followed this summer by a second 2500 by 4 Warhorse amplifier, the WXA 1000.4. So, this was released by Kicker, and at least somebody works for Kicker, and so it's, it's solid information. Uh, could the dates always change? Yes, but I mean, like I was telling you guys, it's here. <clears throat> wink, wink. It's here. It's ready. It's going to be on the market. So get ready to uh, purchase your Warhorse any day now. Just just get ready. Thank you so much for tuning in. I figured I would just address the elephant in the room <laughs> and talk about it a little bit. And, uh, you know, just stay tuned for that stuff. I'm telling you, man, it's going to be awesome. Thank you for tuning in, Cedric. What is up? Appreciate that you're here with us. Hope you're doing well. Getting all ready for Slamology. Uh, yes, W, we got the PC working good. Um, long story short, you, you might notice on the screen over here where it would, you know, right, right where the look at it guy, we used to have a name there. It said sponsors. Yeah, that was taking up, I, I am not lying to you, 20 plus percent of my CPU. And I got a pretty decent i7 9700K IC or PC blah, 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 
capacitor. <laughs> That's what I got. It's nice. Uh, it works. And uh, it was using 20% of that, which is way too much. And now we're able to go full tilt boogie with everything going on like I normally do. And, and there's no lag on my end. And the uh, CPU usage is good. So that's kind of crazy. Uh, ask me why that happened. I don't know. I'm not a computer guy. But thank you, Dubby, for asking. Excessive migraines work well for those headaches. Oh, man, they go hand in hand, huh? <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, Joe Keenan. Appreciate ya. Uh, Andy's made it big when you know he's running a disclaimer at the beginning of shows. Andy knows that you just got to look at it. Would you look at that? We keep that there, man. Uh, you know, just because, uh, one, it's professional. Two, it's on the Mc Pat McAfee show. And, uh, you know, just because I do, uh, you know, there is a lot of kicker in the background here. And I might say a little bit of wasted information. And, and you know, don't want to hold them too much responsible, but... More legal purposes. Thank you, though. Appreciate you. And it, it does feel professional. I like it. In the beginning, I was like, oh, really? And then when I really took a look at it, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Pat, Pat does that, too. Pat does that, too. I swear, this color looks blue now since I changed all those settings on the uh, the camera here. Let's see. Does the added ISO help any? We'll see if that makes it look any better. Shutter speed. Yep. Nope. Yep. It's getting worse. There we go. I like that a little bit better. Little grainy. All right, cool. Oh, uh, it's okay, BT. Well, since that is new and that wasn't, you know, a glitch. I took a look at it. Huh? Oh, yeah. would you look at it? Yeah. You looked at it. I looked at it. Very good. I kept looking at it. He just kept looking at it. He's like, I got to come back to the green team. Thank you, BT. I appreciate you. And there he is. Uncle Bobby B, baby. Uncle Bobby B. Thank you for tuning in, Bobby. Appreciate you. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Raymond Amaro. Thank you for tuning in, Raymond. Are you ready for Slamology? Uh, you know, I always get ready the first two months before Slam. And I'm making phone calls, I'm making plans, and getting my build ready. Am I ready right now? No. Will I be ready in about a month? Yes. So I cannot wait, man. Slamology is going to be awesome. And we will be live there again. A mini studio like before. But, I mean, we got this fancy camera up here, man. We can just zoom in and just look at all the people walking around us. And uh, just have fun. It'll be great. And, uh, of course, bring some people on to interview them. I wanted to get JP on it last year. But, you know, it's really hard uh, to just be like, hey, stop what you're doing. Because I know how it is being there at Slam. People are going to want demos of your build and your products. And you got to be there. Uh, but we got Steve Irby. I mean, right? <laughs> that was awesome. And all you guys that tune in got to uh, jump on the, the live show. And it was it was cool. And I was surprised I was able to hear everybody as well. Just because it, Slamology is loud. Thank you for tuning in, Chad. Hope you're doing well. Andy, why does this hobby kick us when we're down and test us to our limits constantly? Why doesn't everything just work all the time? Is that too much to ask? You know, I used to ask my mom that, and you know what she told me? She said, would you just look at it this way? People are going to suck in life no matter what hobby you're in. Every cliche, cliche niche is going to have uh, pros and cons with it. And that's why, you know, when... When you do this stuff, you almost have to remember why you're doing it. Not for the likes, not for the shares, not for the views, not for the clout, but because you enjoy it. Because there's always going to be negative people out there. I wish I'd just listen to myself more when I talk this, because it's hard. It really is. And uh, just keep doing what you're doing. Just think with a, with, with a clear mind and... Uh, you know, just put your pride behind you. And that's the best advice I could give you, man. And hey, appreciate that you're here. And it's always a learning curve. The more I've learned with everything, yes, I've learned that I don't know much. And the more I learn, I learned that other people don't always know more than me, you know, and sometimes they do. And those are the people that you want to associate yourself with. The ones that do, the ones that are smart. And usually they're just, they just tend to be a little bit nicer. I don't know why that is. Thank you for tuning in, Chad. Keep it up, dude. Joseph Keenan. Putting a Q at the end. I, I like it, though. It works. I see it. I look at the Q and I, I just throw it up. Joseph Keenan. Wonder when they are going to bring back the KXA amplifiers. 
you know, with the KXA amplifiers, I think that began, well, they have the KX and then the KXA. And the KXA is, what is that? Is that a 44, 46? I know they ran it for three, four years and it's, it, it's, it's done. Could they bring something in that level back again? I think they might. The, the, the big, not even so much just, all right, it was end of life. It ran its four or five years of production. That and the whole COVID chip shortage just said, you know what? Threw the papers up. It's, it's, it's more work than it's worth. Maybe we can come back in a later date. And I think that's probably the route they're going to take with that because you got the DX line, the CX line, and then now the Warhorse line. Whereas there's no KX, KXA line. And we have a few holes in the roster to fill like every year uh, with the, like the Q comp, you know, coming back, but then no QL7 yet. There's, there, we got to fill the roster holes. And I feel like they will uh, just because, you know, people are demanding it and it's a product that works. Uh, so would they bring up the KXAs again and that power, that kind of, you know, more of a sound quality type driver, you know, or amplifier and even the Q class amps too. They might, man. They're always working on something. And I know whenever they plan on making something, it takes like three, four, five years for it to come in fruition because they're always three steps ahead getting ready for the next thing. Thank you, Joe Keenan. Roger has been a member for five months. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. The green team has been going for five, six months, man. That's nuts. Thank you for tuning in, Roger. Appreciate that you're here. I need to bring this up because sometimes I do miss uh, certain things and I like to have this Streamlabs up so I can see it. And cool, awesome. Joe Player, thanks for hanging out with us. Would six Solo Barrick L7S 12s be better than six American Base 12s or better than Sundown 12s? Man, I... I this is a loaded question and I love this because whenever I get into a new hobby and I and I tend to see myself doing this as well uh, when it doesn't have to do with car audio because I, I, I kind of learned the basics with it where I'll be typing in what's the best whatever CPU, what is the best budget, you know, and there the word best it, it could define you for somebody else and, and not for you of what works out better. Is, is really a case that I like to say, what is better? And even again, in that scenario. So the six L7 S12s, man, you got 750 RMS on six of those. Six American base, I don't know, the HD, the uh, Godfathers, the yellow VFL comps, it could be anything, but it, we'll, we'll say something around that power handling. And then the Sundown 12s, maybe like the Type E's, those are 750 um, or the SA's. 750 rms give or take and if, if you have six of each and only so much power i think the kicker could be better and why i'm saying that is simply because they're really efficient drivers they don't need a ton of power the american base sundown might need a little bit more and they could probably take more and you're going to have more cone area more displacement with the kickers but then you might need to build a box that's a little bit bigger and they're going to just Deep, dig down lower or play higher of each driver comparing with itself and and, and that's the thing where there is no best it, it, it definitely comes down to what you're trying to do and do you like how it looks you know like i don't know like do you want to see like a square looking kicker or do you want to see a sundown logo or an american base logo on it too there's a lot that goes into purchasing and planning your system uh, i think any one of those would work perfectly fine but man I'm, I'm gonna have to go with the l7s on this one that, that's that's an easy uh home run swing right there thank you for tuning in joe player let's see here as long as it's in a year i'll wait i need to ah let's see here we got kip litzy on kicker club thanks for tuning in mr kipster roger happy friday andy thank you roger appreciate that you're here man adam johnson what's up kicker fam all hanging out in kicker club you guys are awesome i saw your term lab clamp 
of the Warhorse 10K of 3600 watts at 2.85 ohms. Was that measuring only one half of the push pull of the outputs? Well, whenever I did do that, that's with the SPL lab, but same thing as a term lab. And I clamped, what was it? I think 4,300 watts. So the power um, and, and the rise, I was starting at two. So that rise, I don't think it was that low. My, my rise is like literally to like five ohms. So that's why I was only getting 4,000 watts because that amplifier does 5,000 watts at four ohms. And I'm starting at two. And with the push pull, I, I can't wire at one. I got a dual two and you have to put one set of coils on each. I, I, and it's not technically stable at one ohm either. So to get all like five, 10 K amount of power, I, I, I got a wire down lower or have a different kind of box that has less rise and all that kind of fun variable stuff, different frequencies. You can get more power out of it. Um, but yes, the, um, the 10 K, I, I got 4,300 out of it, and uh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. And, and and the cool thing about it is I wish I would have had, I was trying to do SPL and clamp. With the SPL lab, I can actually measure efficiency, just like uh, Derek's AD dyno and stuff like that, and it'll show me real time. And I do that in my dynos as well, with the CX-1800 and the CT-800.5 that we did few dinos that I had everything there with the efficiency. I would love to do it again and test the efficiency of that amplifier because I already know what it is. That amplifier is like 90 to 95% efficient, which is really unheard of. Like you just don't see that. And this amplifier was made 16 years ago. I mean, produced 16 years ago and I'm sure designed since like the early 2000s. So it's like 20 plus year old technology. It was insane. Um, but yeah, it's, it's awesome, man. Thank you for tuning in. Roger says, get those 50% off coupons ready, set, go. Yes. Yes. For the war horses. El Fuego has got a better source than me. My source says we will see the war horse amps very soon. And then we can take a good look at them, right? <laughs> Thank you. El Fuego. Audio dad. Hey, Hey. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you, man. It's like bass dab and it's audio dad and you got some speakers back there. I like it. I like it. I like it. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm ready for slam. Slam. Yes, yes. I'm really far behind. Now, it's not the sponsors because we still have that ticking. We got it behind J5 over there, too. It was just literally the text. It was a picture, but still. Like, I got a lot of pictures here and they don't pull that much CPU. I think it must have been like some kind of crush format or something. I have no idea. As soon as I did that, now I am literally full tilt boogie ready to go. I don't even know. Let's see. Let's take a look at my performance on CPU. Yeah, 62%. Look at that. Just look at that. That's nothing. That's nothing. Last stream we were on here on Tuesday, it was like 85, 95% like just almost clipping and uh I, that's why i'm like freaking out let's fix it let's get it going donald logan what's up man thanks for tuning in appreciate that you're here again you guys are literally you guys are rock stars will's calling me a rock star you guys are the rock stars always tuning in and that's why i can't bail on these videos even though when i'm not feeling 100 it's like man these guys are nuts i gotta at least turn the camera on thank you so much donald logan spark wants to know are you looking at it you got to look at it. That's all you got to do is just got to look at it. Thank you for tuning in. Sparked Innovations. Appreciate that you're here. I was dusting off my uh, Fanny Jr. the other day. Gotta, I got to use that for something else, man. It's going to be fun. Appreciate you tuning in. Appreciate you. And I am behind. Happy Friday. Appreciate you too, Chad. Thanks for tuning in. Bubba, what is up? You know, Baba's, Baba just wants to keep going here. He's like, I, I can sit in here all day. Baba usually goes boom, so I'm just, I'm throwing it up anyway. Plus, this guy, Cornerstone, awesome guy, awesome friend. Appreciate that you're here. John says, it was an honor to look for Steve to pull him onto the live stream during Slam last year. And if he goes to Slam this year again, I will gladly do it again. Just say, come here, just take a look at it. Come look at this and i know he will and um 
I hope he goes to slam again. I know that was a rare occurrence. I've seen him there twice out of the four or five years that I've been there. So who knows? We'll see. That would be cool to see him there again. And thank you, John. Appreciate you, man. And John is in the back here. And oh yeah, these are all popping up here. Would you look at that? Would you just look at it? Uh, let's see. Thank you for starring this, J5. Appreciate you, man. Hey, Andy, I got a question. If I have a distribution block on my alternator with a power wire running to it, to the back battery, would the distribution block hold voltage since the battery is wired to it? Um, well, if you got a distribution block, a distribution block, it, it's literally in the name, it distributes the power. So it's just like a, a connection point, a, an intersection, if you will, for power to go through, back, forth, what, ha what have you. So if you have it on your alternator, between the alternator, let me read this one more time, just to make sure. I got a question if I have a distribution block on my alternator, so I'm guessing it's just between the alternator and the back battery or front battery. Would that distribution block hold voltage since the battery's wired to? Yes. Uh, all you would have to do is literally ground somewhere else of whatever you're connecting that distribution to. Like say you have your charge wire coming from your alternator going to the distribution block and then you have the distribution block going to your rear battery, your front battery, your amplifier, however you have it. And then say you want to tap something that takes, you know, 12 volt, 14 volt in your car to that distribution block. You can absolutely do that. You just need to connect to a ground somewhere. You can either make your own ground by cleaning, you know, metal and sanding it down and making your own connection, or you can use an existing ground that's in your car if you got a front battery or not. Now, if you have a battery delete, which this might be the case, it's kind of the same thing of how a battery delete works in, in the front of the car, and it's like a distribution block. It's just pretty much the same thing because there's no battery inside of it. Um, so what... All you have to do is make a ground. You just need a ground and it would be 100% totally fine. I just, I, I wanted to go deep into that because, you know, I, I could just tell. I look at a question, I'm like, okay, I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta help this guy out. Thank you so much. I cannot read that name, but I like it. It looks fancy and it's got solos in it. Appreciate you tuning in. Audio Dad says the ZX amplifiers were my favorite. Love them. You know, I got one way over here. Um... We can look at it if you want, if you want to take a walk with me here. My my studio is clean on this side and dirty on that side. You know, cream on the inside, clean on the outside kind of thing. I do have an old ZX 550.2. I don't know if that's going to work too well there with the, uh, with the bright lighting. <laughs> but yes, that amplifier is awesome. And I did do an amp dyno on that, but it was a real long time ago. And my power wasn't as good as it is now i would like to redo it but at the same time i do want to do amplifiers people can get that's what holds me back on a lot of them and well you know i got like three different builds going all the time so it's 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 like i need it for this i need it for that uh i don't know i don't know rvh thank you for tuning in andy are you going wait andy you going to run the mini war horse the 1000.4 on your doors hey if i can get my hands on one absolutely absolutely man you know it's just whenever kicker says hey andy we got you something i'm on it uh, that would be perfect for the street series just have one on each and then i can use my other kxa 2400 amp or 400.4 amplifier for outside speakers or maybe just do away with that and two 1000.4s on each side where the 400.4s are and it'd be just bada bing bada boom done and it would be way more power and way louder uh ernie if you're listening <laughs> daniel crouch thank you for tuning in man appreciate that you're here this guy's a bass head too and uh he's got mad beats appreciate you hanging out and uh again man you just need to stop by it's been a long time i haven't seen you in forever appreciate you tuning in dude hope you're doing well that is awesome. Cornut is an install person. Turquoise Wizard Wand. Yes. Yes. And he's also the install caboose, a.k.a. <laughs> Thank you, Alpha Wago. There's Cornut. Would you look at that? What's a Cornut? What is a Cornut? Let's see. What is up, Kicker fam? 
That must be... I, I'm, I'm streaming on a few different places. I have Kicker Club here, but there's two Kicker Clubs. We got Kicker Audio Fan Club, Kicker Club. Uh, but, you know, just trying to get it out there because, man, I, I, I literally got a comment yesterday and I'm I'm trying to help somebody else with a street series right so I'm looking up okay where is uh, my um, link that has an affiliate with with Showtime you know because that's one of our sponsors here and they sell kicker which is great and I got the link and I'm lo looking at it and I look at the comments and I'm like what this is great and this guy literally just said wow this channel is all kicker car audio how did I not see this before you know and it's like I was taken back. I'm like, see, this is, I just need to get out more and more people need to know about it. And hey, it's just within time, man, within time. And we're slowly getting there one step at a time. And that concrete, that foundation is very strong. And it's because of you guys. Thank you so much. Let's see. What did I miss? William W. Ah, uh, there we go. Would you look at that? I just sold my Rockford Fosgate punches. I'm going back to kicker 100%, man. You know, both are, both are a good option. I like my Rockford Fosgate. I had the P3-12s back, or P2-12s back in the day, P3-15s. And they, they, they're they nice. They work, you know. Our buddy Fi, he's got the T-19, uh, I don't know, it's like 20 inches tall. Uh, Rockford Fosgate subwoofer, T-3, 12, 39, crazy. And they make some really cool stuff, and, and it sounds good. Um, but, you know, with, with, with Kicker, it's like I feel like now... Nowadays, especially now, there's more options there. You know, they, they literally talked about on Tuesday on the Unmasked show about all 13 SKUs of just subwoofers they have and each one having its own purpose. And I think Rockford Fosgate's got a lot, but, you know, when, when I think of Rockford, I think of, you know, R1, 2, P1, 2, 3, T, 1, 2, you know, and, that, and that's about it. But I'm sure there's more and I'm just skipping on them. But that's awesome to hear, man way too loaded of a question you're telling me thank you for tuning in kick d you're right i should have stayed here i'm gonna get comp 12s tomorrow which ones the uh the entry level comp the comp c they used to have a comp s and uh comp vr comp r cvx well that's a good one uh but it all depends how much power you got man uh, misspelling Steve Irby's name. I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna tell him. <laughs> Kipalicious, or is it Clipalicious? Clipalicious, Kipalicious. <laughs> Man, thank you, William. Means a lot, man. Means a lot. Shane. Thank you for hanging out. What's up, Andy? Not much, man. Headaches seems to be going away. This happens. I just got to start talking about car audio a little bit, get on the jive, you know, and it's just like I forget my problems. It's the same reason like, you know, you're driving down the street and uh, you hear your car starting to squeal, the fan starting to rattle. You just turn the music up a little bit more and the problem goes away. Thank you, Shane. I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I got a question. I got a question. Would you look at it? I looked at it. All right. Jeremy, not Snoop Dogg. It's Shut Dogg. Shupik, thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Thoughts on the 33-inch woofer out there? Would anyone put that in the car? Are you talking about the uh, Audio Bond? The Audio Bond. Not the Auto Bond. The Audio Bond 33-inch woofer. That thing was insane. Now, could it handle a ton of power? Nah. Could it move a ton of air? It's a 33-inch woofer. Um, and and kind of knowing, like, how speakers work, man, that would be really hard to fit in any car, you know? Not even just the airspace, the width, man. My box for Cookie Monster is 38 inches, so you know, like, the, the width of it. So, to fit a 33-inch woofer, and then, you know, to have a little bit of wiggle room on the outside, like, it is the box. So, that thing's got to be tall and deep to get the proper airspace. And, man, I could just imagine probably at least 15 cubes minimum for that 33-inch driver. Maybe a little bit less, but still, you got to think... Uh, a 33 inch driver is not it's definitely more than uh i think 215s definitely more than 215s and a lot more actually <laughs> a lot more i think it would be 17.5 high times 
two, pi, whatever, figure out the surface area. I don't even know. Let's look it up. I, I, I'm kind of interested of how much cone area that that has. Let's see here. Oh. Nope. You know what? I can't figure it out. <laughs> oh, man. Because a 15 is 176 square inches. An 18, 212 is 223. 18, 254, 276, 276. And then square is 324. Square for a 15 is 250. Square for a 12 is 144. Man, I don't even know. That's got to be up in the four or 500 range. Like almost got to be 500 for like, like a uh, 412 setup. It's got to be. No, it's actually keeping everything nice and cool. That's why I have it like, you know, kind of close to the like, you know, the screen on this side, you know, just to help blow the air in that direction. But I was also thinking that, you know, just extra fannies for the computer to help the cooling with the GPU and the CPU would be perfect, man. Just slap it right in there and uh, we're good to go. Uh, no, it was actually just literally, uh, I, I will show you. <laughs> I will show you the, the or maybe I, I think I might have deleted it. I don't know. Let's see. Let me take a look at it. Uh, do, 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 do. I got so many things on here from all these videos all the time sponsor banner no not that one that one's on there sponsor title ready that right there the one it just flickered right over well let's see can we get right there right where my hands pointing that little sponsor title 20 percent cpu i'm not lying to you guys either it's really insane see right now it's on and look at my CPU usage, 76, 78, 80. And then I go and turn that off. And then we go back to here. Watch that just drop 50, 60%. Tell me why, <laughs> tell me why <laughs> that makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, definitely not the logo. <laughs> Thank you, Sparked. Man, I am so far behind on these comments. Sometimes you just got to put your foot down. Thank you, Coronut. RVH says, I don't think my car will be slam ready. You know, it, it, it does take a lot of time and practice. <laughs> practice is key. Because like when you go to Slamology the first time, you don't really know what to expect. And then you're like, oh, well, next year I'm going to do this. And that's how all the guys are watching here that went to the first time last year, which was great. And, uh, hey, man, you, you need the golf cart that's got the turbo kit on it, you know, just so you can see every build because this place is massive and you got to get around fast. <laughs> Andy, was the lifting of the embargo confirmed by HQ green light given? No. No, and I have not heard back. I talked, I picked up the Batman phone, and um, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I have not heard anything, and uh, that was news to them as well. <laughs> That's why I was like, what? You know, same, man, same. And uh, no, no green light yet. Uh, okay, so I got that one. Awesome, awesome. El Fuego, next year for me to go to Slam. My event will be Surf City this year in August. Baba, Corna, BT, V13, anyone else? You know, I almost made it last year, but then I had to get married. You know, that, that stuff kind of happens. Uh, you know, who knows? I, I definitely do want to go out there and just like all the shows as much as I can, you know, and knowing that it's out in the Pacific Northwest, which is all you guys. The Pacific Northwest. I, it, it, it's definitely on the bucket list, man. Thank you, Alpha Wago. And there he is. He's late. Make it rain. Hit it, Michael. Eddie. <laughs> Thank you, 25. 
I appreciate you, and uh, this guy does not miss a show like a lot of you guys, and he's he's been around for a long time. Bobby B, I know since the War Horse is finally being released, I need to hurry up and send Baba some money. I'm going to get a key, 200.4, 500.1, or a CX 800.1, and an L7T10 for my key. Already got my KS components. Man, you know, with the key 200.4, that'll be perfect. And with the KS components, it's going to sound good. Now, with a 500 uh, key or an 800.1, what do you want? DSP functions with time alignment and a lot of control? Or an 800.1 where you're getting more power? I, I think with the L7T, that's a 400 RMS driver. I think that if you really want to have a lot of control and with that kicker sound more so, like how it's just kind of fine-tuned, that's what the key amps do is fine-tune your sound and your, like your EQ curve, your time alignment, all that kind of fun stuff. I think that would be the way to go unless you're just trying to get more bass than maybe go with the 800.1. It all depends what you're trying to do. Uh, let's see here. I know we hit 7,000. I made a post about it on Facebook. I didn't even say about it on YouTube. Yes, 7,000 subscribers. Would you look at that? Just, just, just look at it. It's great, man. Thank you, John. And uh, thank you, all 7,000 of you out there. I know you're not all listening, but uh, I feel like I'm on a radio broadcast talking to who knows what. But I can actually see you guys, so it's great. Uh, but yes, all 7,000 of you guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. El Fuego with the $7 super chat. Well, we got to do math here. We got pennies. I got pennies. <laughs> Would you look at that? Oh my gosh, just look at it. Just look at it. You gotta look at it this way, okay? You just gotta look at it. That's all you can do anymore. Thank you, El Fuego. A big $7 for exceeding 7,000 subs. The Live and Loud with Danny fans are in full tilt boogie mode. Absolutely, man. And full tilt boogie is the way. Thank you, El Fuego. Appreciate you, man. Uh, starting off the train early, throwing in the coal to get it going, and uh, just giving a little shout out here. I appreciate you, El Fuego, and uh, thank you, man. I know, 7K, it's crazy. And, uh, you know, I, I look at the, the analytics a little bit, and it's like, okay, we are growing each time more. Like, the multiplier is multiplying, so we're doing something right. Thank you, El Fuego! Call me a rock dweller, but what does that war horse do? Well, you just got to look at it for one. Oh, we got a subscriber. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? <laughs> I, I need my regular just look at it here. I don't have that, but I guess we could throw this. That's a live stream? Yeah. Would you look at that? <laughs> Thank you for subscribing. But yes, this war horse right there that you're looking at. That does uh, 10,000 watts at 2 ohms and 5,000 at 4. No, it's not 1 ohm stable. No, I haven't tried it below uh, 2 ohms. But knowing how most kicker products are, and I've tested a older CX-1800 1800 at half ohm when it was the 2 ohm version, and... I really had to be careful turning up the knob. Like I had to let the rise come into effect or it would just go into protect because I was seeing below, like way below two ohms and just kind of how that works. It's not so much just, oh man, I'm at half ohm. My amp's going to blow up. It's the amount of current. So when you clamp an amplifier, you have AC voltage and then you have amperage current. It's the current. That's the problem because you have the same AC voltage. Whenever you're below like half ohm, your voltage is at, or your current is actually double what your AC voltage is. And that is what blows up amplifiers, that current going through there to make that below one ohm test. So just because you're wired down there and you could be rising to 0.7, but if you don't go over certain thresholds of what the amplifier would normally do of that current, at one, two, four, eight, 32 ohms, it's not gonna blow up. But once you go past that, it depends on how strong that amplifier is designed. <laughs> is it dummy proof or is it a budget, a budget gem 
and then it blows up the first time it has a problem. And, and that's the difference of what you're paying for more for quality stuff, you know? And yes, kicker, but a lot of companies out there too, man, you know, you, you, you pay more, you do get more. Um, so could that Warhorse survive a one ohm load on a resistive? Probably not. But could I wire it lower at like one ohm to see if I can get that two ohm, 2.3 and just full tilt 10,000 watts? That's the name of the game, man. When you're a competitor, when you're in SPL to get the most out of your amplifiers. Now, can you play music down to 20 hertz up to 120? Probably not. It's not going to be able to build enough air pressure, which is the acoustical spring. Yes, there's electrical stuff going on with the woofer, but then there's resistance of that pressure, you know, gravity, physics of why you get a higher impedance when you apply power. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it, man. And that's why, you know, you just wire it where you're supposed to and, and you, you never have an issue. Thank you, John. Got bass. Uh, okay, let me see. For some reason, I don't know if I'm probably just kibitzing too much. Plus the fives, they don't stay up here very long. I got to really look for them. Um, I'm missing them. I'm missing them. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you. JT1970. Wow, look at that. Nick oh, my gosh. Nick just Clark. look at it. Just look at it. You got to look at it this way, okay? You just got to look at it. That's all you can do anymore. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Appreciate that you're here and uh, always tuning in, man, and your kind words. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Hogan. I'm so far behind the comments. This guy's probably gone. Love you, Hogan. Hope you're doing well, man. Good question. Clippo going to have wasted information ready for slam. I think he is. From what I heard is that is the plan. That is the idea to have all 39 L7Xs in his car at Slamology. And, and, and you should be able to hear it if it's done and ready, which I think he will. I mean, he's got a nice team helping him out, getting him across that finish line, man. That is a big build. Uh, let's see. Joseph Keenan, uh, CXA 360.4, I'm thinking about grabbing for my mids. Would it do good on PA speakers? I mean, a, a four-channel amplifier from Kicker is going to do on, good on any kind of speaker. I mean, you can even run subwoofers on a 360.4, and, you know, just, you can't. So would it work on PA speakers? Yes. Now, another option, too, would be to think about the KXA line, and, you know, they're not really all out there like we were talking about but they are still out there and those are cool because they have a band pass mode and you might need a band pass mode on like a mid-range so that you can set you know a high pass and a low pass on both ends of that and aka a band pass so you're only playing certain frequencies between two crossovers now can you do that with a dsp sure then you could just run the 360.4 no issue you could do it either way i'm just being extra thank you joe keenan Donald Logan, does Kicker have an SQ vehicle? Man, how many do they got? You know, I, I, I think SQ would be a cool topic to learn more about just because I'm not 100% on SQ. I know it's, you know, if it sounds good and it's got some good sound quality, that's about as far as it goes. And a little bit of, you know, time alignment, positioning, listening to where things are. Um, but still, do they have an SQ vehicle? Yeah, man. You got to hop in John Myers, man. That Mustang, it's a little bit more than SQ. It's like SQ, like real SQL. Like it's, it, it could tell you, you know, this, this tin hats over here and this snares over here and, and, and like boom bass. It's crazy. It's snappy. It's awesome. Um, now with just in general, yeah, I, I don't know. There's lots out there, but them themselves. Yeah. John's ones that they actually play i mean i i love the metropolitan that's in the uh in the museum i wouldn't say it's just straight up pure sound quality like oh man this thing's got the best staging but it just sounds phenomenal clear smooth but like little extra gravy in the bass like we like and uh it sounds awesome it really really does yes all of the cone not cone area yes good night brother See it slam. I will see it slam. I, I wouldn't came in out. I would have came out to Mecca, but uh, I I had to see Stephanie from from Johnny Five here. I I had to man. I had to. Appreciate ya. 
Would you just look at it? <laughs> yeah, Andy, let's look up the file type, file size later. It's three megabytes. It's three megabytes. I don't know what the heck, man. I don't know. Um, I'm using everything from my machine and not stream elements. I'm using everything from the machine. Everything you see here you with all this stuff, that's all files and, um, yep, <laughs> that's all stuff here. And, you know, it works. It works, which is crazy, man. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Oh, come on, 25. We don't got LimeWire here anymore. Thank you, Lee's Custom for tuning in. Where in New Pacific Northwest? I don't know. <laughs> Baba loves the clip. He loves it. I'm so far behind, guys. What's up, Mr. Scott? Appreciate you. You come up here, Oregon. You need to see what kicker subs can really do. PM me. That is Kevin Monte. Ah, the Pacific Northwest, guys. Would you look at that? Would you just look at it? The Pacific Northwest. You know what? One day, man, I will be there. I will be there. Kibo, Kibo, Kibo. Thank you for hanging out, Keebs. Appreciate you, man. Oh, this guy's just waking up. Come on, Jake. Come on, Jake. Good morning. All right. Blake's here. Jake's here. We got the whole crew. Just made it. How are y'all doing? I'm doing all right. Headache went away, but, you know, whew. We, we talked about a lot tonight. We did, man. You know, and it's just like, ah, uh, there's there's always questions out there. And I, I, I try to put, you know, like these live streams into smaller video clips, if you've noticed, and to help reach other people that might not just tune in all the time. But I will always be doing I love the live streams because, you know, someone might just see it and look at it and be like oh man i actually do have a question and we get that man we get it enough to the point where it's like yes 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 let's keep doing this man and of course we have to do like you know spl tests and power tests and dinos and all kinds of stuff too man because you know it gets it gets it gets a little monotonous thank you for tuning in katie K katie kaden <laughs> he's gonna kill me thank you for tuning in man appreciate you Hope the yellow car is doing well. This guy, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to get him on a kicker. He, he's thinking about it. He's looking at him. He can't He can't stop looking at him. I'm learning a lot about SQ right now. I know this guy knows more with that stuff than me with just, you know, man, I'm messing up this camera. I, I, I switched up a few things here um, with just, you know, like time alignment and crossovers and how crossovers can adjust phase and mess with that kind of stuff. It's, it's really insane when you get down the rabbit hole of SQ. It's just the same as SPL whenever you're trying to get every tenth out of the build and wire down and do all this stuff. It's like the same thing, but like even worse. <laughs> it's a whole another thing and it's like i might as well i want to learn about it to pretty much fine-tune my skills but at the same time i'm sticking with what i really enjoy and that is the spl portion power just straight up moving air and and making it sound good enough and you know that well-balanced system that we all strive to have john Gotti. Thank you for tuning in. I have a KX 800.5. How do I do the band pass like you just said for the mids and highs? Yes, all you have to do is where it says, it'll say, I think, uh, low pass, high pass, BP, and then off. When you go to the band pass mode, uh, there, your two sets of crossovers will be there, and you'll have a 1x to 10x ratio. And obviously, you just do 10 times whatever that number is, and it's going to tell you the frequency range. If you do sh look into the manual, it, it'll go more into depth of how that actually works, but all you're doing is setting a high pass on the left side and a low pass on the end when you're in band pass mode so that you only play those certain frequencies. Cause usually it'll go like what, like 50 to 200 and on the one X and then you can set it to like, you know, 200. So it doesn't play anything below 200 Hertz. And then you go on the other side of things and be like, well, I don't want it to play anything over 5,000 Hertz. Cause it's not a, it's not a tweeter. It's not a full range. And you, 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 you put it at 500 and that's how that works. Or just, you know, 5,000. And it depends what you're trying to do. There's, there's a lot to it, man. I haven't really messed with it so much. Cause it's just like, man, I got this speaker doing this job, this speaker doing this job. 
me try the band pass mode and kind of tweak it. Okay, yep, that works. That sounds good because now I don't need to waste energy where I don't need it for that speaker. And I can play it louder where it needs it. And that's that's kind of the deal with that. And it'd be perfect for the mids. It'd be perfect for the mids. You don't want to take too much over the top on the mids because you want that still crystal sound coming through. You don't want to just put a cap where that speaker could still be louder. But hey, maybe you're just trying to make it as loud as it can and work the best at that frequency range rather than being well-rounded and it all depends what you're trying to do you know what i mean man sometimes it's better to uh just have more drivers and do less with each one but then all together as a like as a whole they're louder and they, they sound just as good as they would but at a louder volume which is really cool let's see uh, got some questions here when setting up an lc2i pro and amp which one do you set first as far as gain you know, this is a good question here. Uh, whenever you're like with the key amplifier or the LC2i inverter DSP kind of thingy thing thing, um, whenever you're setting with that gain there first, what I would do is do that one first. You start from the beginning and then you work your way back. So with your head unit that you obviously don't have, you can't adjust that per se. There might be a subwoofer out, but are you tapping into that? Maybe, maybe not. Say if you're just tapping into a full range signal that isn't, you know, cut off, or maybe it is, and that's why you're running that to restore some of the sound, like the key amp, the key kicker key lock does, and uh, with within reason, of course. So what you're going to want to do is set that gain first, and and another way you can do that too is hook up where the RCAs are coming out that would your amplifier hook up to. All you would do, you can actually hook up a DD1 to that or any kind of O-scope and, you know, just see where you're clipping, look at the voltage, see how much power is coming out of there. So then you're thinking, okay, I'll set it just at around, you know, two volts or maybe I want to set it up to four volts of pre-out and set it, forget it. Then you go to your amplifier and then you set your gain there because you're going to want to match that four volt RMS coming out of that line out converter to the amplifier. That's all you're doing with gains. It's not gain matching, that's with two different amplifiers, but you are going to be matching that gain with that source of the amplifier to whatever source, aka the head unit or your line out converter that you're running right there. Start your way in the beginning, work your way back. Because if you start on your back and then you start working your way forward, all those settings you did back there are going to all get adjusted to what you're doing up front because it starts from the front. Thank you for tuning in. All right, let's take a few more questions and we're going to wrap this up because I am running out of energy. Yes, I got that one. I got that one. I got that one. Thank you, man. Thank you. I got it. Appreciate you, Mr. Toboder87 for tuning in with us tonight. Uh, you guys are awesome. Tell them RVH. Otis, this guy right here. I hope you're still here, man. This guy won the TDH giveaway, and would you look at that? He's on here with us. Appreciate you, Otis. You got to send me some pictures whenever you do install that. If you haven't already, when you do of uh, that build, I would love to see it in action. I wanted to, uh, whenever it was down there from last year's, I know uh, the, the guy that won last year wanted to show me a system, and then uh, I couldn't find anybody. And uh, there's always next year, man. But I do want to see yours. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, congratulations again, dude. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome, man. Like, literally, literally awesome. Ah. Uh, yes. Yes, Bobby B, I will be getting that. How would you set Kicker QS components with the KX800.5? Whew, John Gotti, um, how would you set the QS components? So yeah, not the coax with the components, got a separate tweeter with the 800.5, right? So uh, what you can do is run them all together because uh, they have it where if you run them together, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think because some of them have resistors in line so that that tweeter doesn't get too much power. It eats that power and then you still get that four ohm load that you normally would with that for a um, driver just the 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 six and a half or the six by nine whatever without the tweeter or the middler if you got the three-way or something like that 
and that's how that kind of works so i mean the best way to do it is to literally have like you know more channels than that just so that you can have like a six channel and have you know your tweeters your mid and your sub base for your front staging one two three on each you can do like some type of like old school way they used to do it with like the try try what was it called oh like a tri-band <laughs> where they have like subwoofers hooked up to like a mid-range and the way they did it with like resistors and stuff you can run all three together it was like built-in crossovers and, and that's the thing too man you got crossovers so you don't really have to worry about too much power going to it because it's kind of eliminating that <laughs> it's eliminating the power on the lower end frequencies so you can run them all together and put it on the amplifiers you normally would with a regular four channel amp that's that's kind of what I'm getting at. It's those resistors that are in line, uh, regardless with with the passive crossovers. That is what comes with the components. It's a passive crossover. Uh, whenever you have the coaxials, you don't get that. It's got extra stuff inside there, but you still just hook it up normally. The the, the benefit of having these components here is you can move, you can move uh, the tweeter around and have it where you want rather than by your kneecap you can have it up in front of your dash angling 33 degrees to north pacific west and you're good to go and it sounds great uh so i would just run it as normally and you should be fine you know one speaker component set on each channel and that fifth channel on the subwoofer thank you for tuning in El Fuego question at Living Loud with Andy. What say you about six comp gold 12s wired individually to eight ohms, and then parallel to 1.3 to a Warhorse 3600? Oh, would you look at that? Not so much mechanic, just subscribed. Would you look at that? You know, I like this one too. Oh, look at the eclipse. The boom box here does yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I said, would you cold. look at that? Thank you for subscribing. Not so mechanic. That's awesome. All right, so six comp gold. So those are four ohms a piece. That's too many speakers. So we're gonna pull out the Ultimate Car Audio app, which is awesome, by the way. If you don't have the Ultimate Car Audio app, you might not be able to see it on my phone here because of the whole, you know, that kind of fun thing. Um, the Ultimate Car Audio app, I actually was messing with it for something else. It wasn't even speakers, but to figure out impedance and all that kind of fun stuff, uh, dummy loads and stuff. So those are all dual voice coil, but they're four of them. So we go into the dual voice coil wiring configuration and we got six speakers. So you type in six impedance per coil four, one amp. So you would be at, yep, 1.33333333333333 ohms on the Warhorse. And I would do it like this, you know, 3600 divided by six. So about meh, 600 watts going to each one. But we know that amp does a little bit more than that. So 600 to 800 watts on six of those. I think that's plenty because it gives you a lot of headroom. And 1.333 ohms is a good load for a weird amount of subs on one amplifier. I mean, you got six, you know, if you had three, it'd be like one point six six or two point three three or two point two point six seven i think it is um but still you get st weird numbers um either way so i think that would be really good in six twelves firing up no wall kind of build port back you'd be flexing some stuff and those golds are very 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 efficient they get loud and they don't need a ton of power and they sound good um and they they're they're, they're gold man they're, they're gold what's going on jimmy kokia i'm here uh, yeah, I was uh, plan on putting it in the Skyline. Awesome. That's right. The R34 or 35? I think you were saying it's the R35. That's crazy. He's like, oh, I'm just going to put it in my Ferrari real fast. <laughs> you know, and that system is perfect for, like, that kind of car. You know, you don't want to put a quad box in the back of that thing. That's that's perfect. Downfire an enclosure with just the whole nine that you're covered. Kit, speakers, amplifier, it's awesome and 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 it's power too so it's just it's crazy man exo is doing a good job passive or active i run all active i think passive has its place but you can do the same with active i don't know i feel like you're limited on passive with power and maybe tunability you know it's just there's so much out there now that you can just kind of dial things in digitally the way you want you really do. 
That's it. Try mode using passive crossovers. Thank you, RVH. I knew somebody would know about that. And uh, yes, that is it. He said, I'm that old. <laughs> I, re I remember seeing amplifiers that would say try mode and I'm like, what is, what is, what is try mode? And it's like, like all these speakers and I'm like in the manual and I'm like, what the heck would you look at that? That's so cool. Ah, I came over to YouTube. This is Otis again. Not so mechanic. Yeah, this is the way to do it. Facebook's cool, but it's to bring new people in YouTube. You, you get to see all the conversation in one place. Um, it's awesome. Welcome to the party, man. Welcome to the party. Thank you for answering, man. I was asking because I was putting in an excess power super bank, 500 under the hood, and it has to be wired to a battery. So I was wondering if I could wire it to that distribution block. Yeah, man. I mean, everything, once you connect it all in parallel, it all becomes one big battery in a sense. Um, yeah, that'll be to totally fine for that. And yeah, those work really good under the hood because they're a capacitor. They're just carbon and it's not a real battery. It's just, they're different. So it's like really safe if you're going to put any kind of battery that's not a battery delete and you want to run different lithium. That really is the way to go, is have that under the hood so that that kind of works with everything, helps with the voltage load detection, and uh, is super safe under your hood. And that is awesome, man. Absolutely happy to help, man. Exo gone nuts. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> I love that video, though, man. I love it. And we were just having a deep conversation, and he's just... He brought that up. I'm like, would you look at that? <laughs> like, I died. Let's see here. So, Boater, do you have anyone local to Greensburg, Latrobe area that can help me tune my setup? I'm sort of new and have no clue what I'm doing. Help. Man, you know, would you look at that? <laughs> if you know, you know. Um, yes, there's actually a lot of people in that area that I know. You know, I, I want to help a few people, and I try. It's like I'm just totally overloaded and to... I can look at the systems and just look at them and that's about it and you know do a few things to fix them and stuff but totally install that's tough now a tune-up I'm always down for that kind of stuff man uh, yeah you're not too far away from me uh, you're gonna have to give me a holler I live in love with Andy at gmail.com if you're not friends with me on Facebook appreciate ya what did I miss the whole show <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. And on that on that note, <laughs> I think we're done here. Push trees or blow trees. Oh man, what am I missing here? Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> it's still in Cali. Come on, Jake. You got work to do. Get back to it. He did. He did. He's always missing it. 25 is calling for the caboose. Would you look at that? All right. I love you guys. Um, I will see everybody Tuesday. Um, we might have a special guest or we might be doing something crazy. It's just one of the two. It's not in the middle. So make sure you tune in this Tuesday for Kicking It With Annie during the Kicker Unmasked time frame. Um, but without further ado, I love you guys. It's been another Friday show. Just having fun, man. You guys are awesome. I love you. And I will see you guys at the end of the caboose. And we got to get it going. Love you so much. And as always, stay living loud.
you know, John is always tapping out. <clears throat> it's lameology. Joby will do that to you. Joby's got a new build that John probably wouldn't tap. All it likes to do is play 19 hertz. And uh, not a new sub, just a, a new coil. We gotta make it through another slam. I want to show him. I want to show him something cool. Just something cool in your background. I gotta show him. Wiz, calm down, man. No, yeah, there's nothing to see here, guys. Nothing to see here. Cornut coming in clutch with a four dollar. What the? Cornut, he is on point with the timing. That is insane. And you know what? Three, two, one. And you're too late, Kanga. The show's over. <laughs> Love you guys. See ya on the next 